Last week, we brought you the exclusive news that Disney Plus has $30 billion in the hole and Bob Iger has essentially broken the company. No, that's not being largely reported across the media, but we brought the receipts. And today, well, we're going even farther. Today, we're going to show you that Disney Plus has truly failed. That's right, failed. And we'll tell you what Disney plans to do about it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, of all backgrounds. Happy Monday. We hope you had a great weekend, and it is time to explain entertainment and keep you ahead of the culture curve. Helping us do so, Culture Casino and Jonas J. Campbell. Gentlemen, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Folks, as we get into this video, uh, please consider going over to subscribe to our brand new channel, T3PO. It is the location for podcasts and long format discussions, the kind of conversations you've come to expect here, but even more for you over there. Link in the description down below. And here is the news. Gentlemen, Disney Plus has utterly failed. We're gonna show folks how and why. This comes to us from uh, Mac over on Twitter. Folks, we'll have the uh, link to uh, this down in the description as well. But take a look at this and, and guys, I'm gonna get your take on it because you may agree, you may disagree with me significantly. One of the things that I have never liked is that when we talk about who is in what place in streaming, we seldom list YouTube as being above Netflix. Usually what you'll hear folks say is Netflix is number one, Disney Plus is number two. Now that's wrong. It's wrong in multiple ways. But one of the ways that I think it's most wrong is I always think that it's appropriate to talk about YouTube as in, in terms of streaming because I don't know why you wouldn't. And this, uh, this chart obviously does this. YouTube at 9.3% of all TV watching done, period. And that's not including, by the way, the, those little phones, those little gizmos and gadgets in your pocket. Netflix coming in at 7.8%. Um, streaming that doesn't fit in any of these other categories, that goes into the 5.6%. Uh, then you've got Hulu. Then you've got Amazon. And then way down there, you've got Disney+. Plus. Disney+, Plus, gentlemen, is barely beating Tubi. And in fact, Disney+, Plus is far far closer to being Paramount Plus than it is to ever looking like Netflix. And that is why Bob Iger has taken the extraordinary step that we exclusively revealed on this channel, by the way, that Disney Plus was going to be duct taped to Hulu and that ultimately Hulu would be killed because they need to merge the two together and then call that Disney Plus to try to create the sorts of numbers that would get them closer to the behemoth that is Netflix. Gentlemen, is there anything in my analysis so far that is incorrect? No, the only no. And in fact, it's indicative of everything that Disney has done. I'm sure we can all recall what was done with, uh, let's, let's just go backwards. Uh, Star Wars, Marvel, Pixar, uh, Lucasfilm. I said that already, but uh, of course the worst one being uh, the Muppets. You really can't oh, yeah. say Lucasfilm and Star Wars enough though, when you, when you hammer them on this. Yes. Well, I mean, did you mention Pixar? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, yes, uh, the the utterly destroyed uh, Pixar. Yeah, yeah. Oh, one uh, one last thing. Um, there's no ESPN Plus or anything in there. Oh yeah, yeah. They 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 don't even register. They're they're gonna they're gonna pretend like that never happened. Uh, the same they, way they're gonna try to pretend that Hulu never happened. They're gonna try to pretend that uh, yeah, but, ESPN Plus never but happened. They're, they're pretending that 25 million people don't happen. So 25 culture. million people who get that thing as a as an addition on the streaming bundle because they're they're like, oh, well, if you agree to this one for 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 two pennies more, can we please add you to the numbers for ESPN plus? <laughs> right. And that's but that's why this chart is so important. It's because these, yeah. these, this is real. So yeah. what happens is they use these subscriber numbers. Right. And so when you use the subscriber numbers as the metric for how well your streaming service is doing, then you can give your streaming service away for 99 cents or $1.99, or you can tack it onto some already pre-existing cable company and then say, oh, well, that's, you know, we've gained 7 million subs in the last quarter. This is the actual viewership. These are the ratings for these platforms. Disney Plus is nowhere close to being number one, but culture, I, I, specifically, why do you think that we don't hear YouTube included in this conversation normally when it appears to me that it should absolutely be, and it's the biggest platform in streaming. 
Probably for the same reason that they lumped all these other services into other streaming. It's there's too much to YouTube. YouTube is essentially the 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 aggregator of all media. You're going to find live television on YouTube. You're going to find live sports on YouTube. You're going to find uh, streaming shows. I mean, you have to remember where did Cobra Kai from? Uh, Cobra Kai come from? It, they came from YouTube. So you 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 have that. They they basically can do everything, and and it's also where all these other competing linear services. Uh, put their clips and other other pieces of media. Uh, who has a presence on YouTube? Well, NBC does. Who uh, CBS does. Uh, all of these entities have a presence on YouTube as well. Why? Because that's where most people are. It, right. It's it, so big they can't even stay off of it. No, I mean, and and I still think these numbers are are even lower when it comes to just how much influence YouTube has. Because at nine point three percent on this pie chart, right? I would say that's still underneath what people uh, the the utilization of YouTube is. I would say that it's even higher. But right, why don't we just see just it? TV, right? Yeah, so you're exactly right. Yeah, yeah. It's it's because they do too much. It's it they they they're uncategorizable. I right, don't even know too if that's big. a word. They're too yeah. big. Jonas, uh, we talked about this uh, more than a year ago on the channel. We talked about Project Hulk. And we came out and we said, Disney has a plan to destroy Hulu. And I remember that we we came on the scene with this first because I remember as we were making that video, I thought, you know, this is going to get us in a lot of trouble because <laughs> people are going to think we've gone nuts. You know, that a company is going to spend, in, in some, let's say they'll spend somewhere approximately $20 billion in all for Hulu. That they're gonna they're gonna spend that much to destroy it. I thought, boy, we're we're really in hot water. And here we are, and the plan seems to be to integrate Hulu into Disney Plus and keep Disney Plus, but the Hulu name eventually will fade. So, Jonas, what do you think about this strategy? And do you think Disney can actually declare victory? That do they just have Scrooge McDuck money where they can buy up Hulu and say, Wah ha ha, we bought the uh, fourth largest streamer. So now we're the <laughs> fourth well, or fifth. Well, yeah, and and uh, it's the third largest streamer, isn't it? Uh, if we're counting YouTube, yes, then yes. then Hulu is third. I I I don't even want to mention what I think other streaming probably. Well, I, is. I know what's in other streamers. It's Twitch. It's Crackle. That those are what's in, in other streaming. But well, that's ahead. actually a better guess. Well, the cleaner guess than I was thinking for those other streamers. Uh, with, with Hulu, you have something that you don't have uh, on on Disney Plus, which is general entertainment, which is something that Disney has generally stunk at, and which is why they bought Fox. Uh, they are they have done this in in other sectors where Disney Plus and Hulu that content is merged together internationally. They call it Star, and they just rename the title Tile. Sorry, so that they don't have to claim that Hulu is actually in that market because they were trying to pull some shenanigans with the other owners of Hulu. And it turns out that those other owners of Hulu caused Disney to behave themselves better than they would if they were running it on their own. When Disney runs these things on their own, they're subject to synergy. And and Hulu is about to get synergized. And that is the, the, that is the death knell for things that Disney buys. Yeah, I agree with you. And, you know, I, I think we're also not we're also looking at this in a way that uh, they're going to try this particular Project Hulk for another reason. They've seen the writing on the wall and the decrease, dramatic decrease in their subscriber base over the course of the last several quarters. And the fact that they had to artificially pump those up for Disney Plus uh, when as compared to Netflix. Netflix is on the rise and they have been. You know, since, you know, way back when, I mean, going even back into, you know, the 2019, uh, right. Netflix has had just a constant, consistent rise in their subscriber. Right. Base. If we say that Netflix got 13 million subscribers and Disney got 1.3 million subscribers, that would be a stark difference. But what actually happened with with this is that Netflix got 13 million subscribers and Disney Plus lost 1.3 million subscribers yes they are they are falling behind in areas where they need to be growing and by the way the area where they lost the most subscribers was where disney and hulu content was merged together into one streaming service under the disney plus name so you could even argue that the presence of the disney name is the only difference there and they make i'm i'm gonna say if you add the disney plus and the hulu numbers together they make one third of what they make on hulu and disney plus together overseas than they make on on 
just uh, ju just that content in the United States. Hulu makes twice as much as Disney Plus in the United States because it doesn't have, you know, it's it's exactly what people expect, which is a place to watch all your shows as opposed to Disney, which is a kids brand that they're trying to pretend like is a uh, hip college brand. So well, then let's talk about why Disney Plus has failed. So the reason that I say Disney Plus has failed at the intro of this video is because, as you correctly assessed, Netflix is still growing. Yeah. YouTube is still growing. Yeah. Disney Plus has at least stalled. It may be shrinking. And at the same time that it has stalled, Disney Plus has one third. One third of its viewership is a single show that is licensed to them and they do not have in perpetuity. Like they're going to have to pay so much money when the when the license runs out on, on Bluey. And none of these other streamers have anything like that. Like YouTube isn't sitting there with one third of its streaming tied to a property it doesn't own, and which is the antithesis of all the other properties it has. The reason that Bluey is pulling one third of Disney Plus viewership is because it's the only thing that families still consider to be safe for their kiddos. Culture, your thought. No, I think you were rather eloquent. I mean, they have very little, they have very little uh, to offer anybody to, to to watch consistently. The there's a pattern to Disney Plus shows. I think uh, Jonas has properly identified it before, and that is the first episode two or three are usually somewhat safe for family viewing. The problem is, is that if you've paid attention, by the time you're you know into that fourth episode, whatever you're watching is no longer safe for your children to view. So yeah, you're you're seeing families walk away from from Disney Plus, and that's going to continue because the only way Disney's been able to increase revenue because we're talk about talk about subscriber de decline quarter over quarter, the the only reason that that they've been able to report an extra billion in revenue from from 2022 to 2023 was because of massive price increases, and that's that's all you're going to get served up with this new you know green blade in this new you know newly incorporated Hulu thing. Um, That's right. Well, also, culture, point out is, that, uh, that Hulu, if, if Hulu has had price increases, it doesn't seem to have affected the market because that one is subsidized by ad revenue. And right. ad revenue, you can only do ad revenue if people are watching the shows. Yes. Uh, that's the economically speaking, if you have an ad supported streaming service, that is so much more healthy and flexible than uh, trying to increase subscriber, um, the, increase subscription. Uh, prices because the consumer is going to feel that more directly than just charging the advertisers more. Well, and to speak to that, one, one of the things that Disney is trying to do, I would assume, is they want to get in on Hulu's advertising money and put that into their DTC coffers and show that off to investors uh, because of the political ad season that's coming up. Hulu will show political ads. Disney Plus, we assume, will not. Now, to, to speak to all of this, though, Chris Gore of course, a film threat has been known in the industry for decades, has done a phenomenal job. Uh, they've been doing a great job over at Film Threat, he and Alan Ng with the uh, D files. But he, he's not a bomb thrower. He's not some crazy guy who's launching, you know, silly tirades that make no sense. Uh, Chris Gore, I think, is a serious person when it comes to re reporting what's going on in Hollywood. And he says that this Warren Smith fellow, uh, that, he, that he's a, exactly right, that the Hollywood math right now for streaming does not add up. And Warren Smith says the laws of economics prove is it in inevitable that Hollywood is imploding. And guys, I agree that Hollywood is imploding. That doesn't mean that entertainment is imploding. So in other words, despite the best efforts of some wackos who've been over uh, YouTube, it has still remained largely democratized. And that has meant that entertainment production has moved everywhere imaginable and that has won the day, right? So it turns out that capitalism has won yet again. Gatekeeping has failed. And so I'm actually feeling very optimistic about entertainment as a whole, but I don't feel very confident that Hollywood is going to survive in its current state. And I think they did it to themselves. I think the streaming uh, concept I think has failed. It's turned into cable 2.0 yeah. where now they're just going to bundle these platforms together and you buy your package with, you know, all of these services put back together, get in like a cable package. And all that's really happened is, is, and Jonas, you've talked about this before. Disney is now a cable provider and that's not a good place for Disney to be because 
Who in the world gets fuzzy feelings about cable providers? No, no one. No one longs for the days of of tuning into that old Comcast show. No one longs for the days of uh, Brightline or I don't know any. They keep changing the names of these companies. They'll ruin them and then try to change into uh, another uh, name to try to market them again, even though it's essentially the same thing over and over again. This is the company that wants to get you over a barrel and uh, in charge you as much as possible over and over and over again. Disney. The what what is arguably the strongest media brand in the entire country is now becoming uh, an IP holding company for whatever they can throw your way. And there's probably a longer conversation to be had about that. They've turned it into Netflix, which Netflix means nothing from an entertainment standpoint, other than we pay a lot of money for shows. There's some good ones in there. There's some bad ones in there. But there is no specific qualitative there's no specific qualitative point to be made by saying this is a Netflix show. Culture, yeah, if, yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't if Disney Plus, no, if, Disney, if Disney had put their content on Netflix and worked out an exclusive deal with Netflix, they would have been they would be enjoying tremendous income with mm -hmm. no expense yeah. on the largest platform. Bob Iger's <laughs> strategy instead has put them in a distant fourth or fifth place, where now they're spending billions of dollars to try to get depending on how you measure it second or third yeah and it's not a close second or third culture uh, your final word on this and in terms of this decision that hollywood made and specifically disney that has put them in a much worse place than when they had dvds and blu-rays and you know special editions and all of that well they, i mean again and, and this is a conversation i've been having with well all of you and tom and many others uh, across our our sphere here where it, it, all of these studios did basically destroyed their business models they they lost access to five or six other streams of income because they decided to launch their own streaming services do you know who didn't do that and enjoys you know wonderful deals as uh, sony uh, and a few others they didn't start up a a, a streaming service per se. They had one, it wasn't any good, but they weren't really in the business for that. It was an experiment for them. Whereas Disney and Bob Iger specifically was involved in establishing two different streaming services, um, you know, to try to, to outmaneuver the competition. Of course, he had to walk away. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and at the same time, you have uh, essentially this, the, the industry recognizing that, they can't survive on their own, which is why, as you mentioned, we're getting cable 2.0. Nobody wants that. You've 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 decimated the opportunity to to capitalize on your plot on your on your catalogs. Which, I mean, you're you're looking at look at Warner Brothers, look at look at um, Disney, look at uh, you know Comcast. Right? They have massive catalogs of material from television shows to films. Why? Why aren't you capitalizing on that with the yes, you you have a behemoth in the room that you allowed to arise over the course of two decades in Netflix. When Netflix uh, Netflix began to change their business model, that's when you may have wanted to look at, hey, maybe we should be looking at what they're doing. But no, you got the, Disney's 20 years behind. Everybody is the only people that are in the game, as we pointed out at the beginning of this video with that amazing chart is YouTube. And that's it. it, 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 it there's no reason and warren smith's 100 right here uh, there's no reason for you to have to now develop even more shows on top of your existing catalog in order to just try to get noticed and there's no quality to anything that any of these streaming services are delivering now netflix buys everything because they can afford to have uh some shows stink as jonas described and just capitalize on the ones that are winners and then they can pivot away, which is something that Disney cannot do because they oh. they only own four or five IPs right now, and they have to keep marketing those four or five IPs. They've integrated them into the parks. They are incapable of pivoting unless they add in all of this Hulu stuff that doesn't mean anything and Fox stuff that doesn't mean anything to the Disney brand. And it, yeah, they, they, they're in an intractable position, correct? Well, so Here's a question for you guys. I, I yeah. didn't mean to go into another thing, but th it has to be asked. There's going to be there's going to be a point when the bluey license ends and you know, it seems, yeah. it's, it seems absurdist to me that we, we talk about a cartoon dog with this kind of, you know, importance, but it, it, it does. Well, it's going to end when it ends. If Disney's willing to spend $30 billion to get Hulu, if bluey is a third of all their Disney plus streaming, how much is Disney going to have to pay to keep bluey yeah. as much as it takes? <laughs> well, that's, and folks, that is why, Disney Plus 
is uh, a failure. Now, and Hulu it, might it, not be a failure, and it, it might lift the Disney Plus ship above water, but Disney Plus, as in its original incarnation, it's time to call it the failure that it is. This is a failed concept, and Bob Iger crushed the company with that failure. Gentlemen, wow. I think it's a good place to stop. I hope, uh, uh, agreed. Although I, I do have a lot more to say. If you've got uh, just three more hours, I can go through this line by line <laughs> and point all, all, all of the problems here and all of the bad de the decisions that were made in trying to sink the entire, the entire future of the Disney company on a streaming service, but refusing to price it correctly, refusing to admit that maybe spending movie size, big movie size budgets on a streaming service that was four to five dollars a month. That's... <sighs> There's more coming from that park place is all I need to say for now. But this is th this lays everything bare and we have got so much to talk about. I'm going to do a streaming. I'm, I'm going to do a live stream specifically about this chart because this is this is too important to let this slide by. That 2B 1.7 versus Disney's 1.9. Well, you're right. Seven, okay, Jonas. I, I have a two seven. minutes on 2B. I, I forgot. We got to talk about it. Two I minutes. Got to go on 2B. Oh, you. Okay, fine. You got fine. to. We, we can't not talk about it. Okay, how about the fact that Disney bought Tubi, if for those of you who are not aware, is Fox Corporation. Not Fox Corporation that has been bought by Disney. This is Fox on its own. News Corp, if you want to talk, call it that. That is the company that used to own about $70 billion, sorry, $40 billion of assets that Disney bought for $70 billion. All of that content was critical for Disney to build a streaming service. That was that was the entire reason for them to buy Fox. This is stated reason. Anyone disagree with me there? You're exactly right. Okay. So Tubi is a free ad supported streaming service. Fast uh, is the is the industry term. They don't own any of that $70 billion of content anymore. They license it from other people. But I haven't looked at Tubi's numbers. I would say that Tubi is probably pretty close to profitable right now because they're getting ads on every single thing they show on that streaming service. You know who bought all of that content for $70 billion, Disney Plus. What is Disney Plus doing compared to Tubi? Losing money every single quarter. So that $70 billion is being put directly towards Disney Plus and Hulu, a little bit in Hulu there. And they're almost beating Disney Plus without any of that content. What does this say about Bob Iger and his business sense to almost be beaten by the guy who sold you all of this content and just said, you know what, we're going to casually step in here. And your your Mandalorians and your Willows with a with a with a an LGBT romance and your Ahsokas and your giant Marvel shows that no one watches. That was what we needed to do to build the streaming service, as opposed to Tubi showing up and said, "Well, the, all this shit stuff that we can get for cheap that apparently people watch. Well, you can show up for free and watch it here, and maybe we'll make a profit pretty soon. But also, it's not going to break the entire company if it doesn't work. And it's very easy to argue that." Disney has essentially broken the entire company trying to get into streaming. To put this in perspective, the Walt Disney World Resort drives about a third of all the profits that Disney enjoys. And it's not in a good place, by the way, the Walt Disney World Resort. Um, for $30 billion that Disney has spent on streaming since about 2019, $30 billion in losses, just in losses, not on the full expense. If we took just the streaming losses since 2019, well, Disney could have a, built another Disney World. So how's that going for you? All right, folks, we got to wrap it. Like, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell and drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts and stay tuned to That Park Place, the YouTube channel, because Jonas apparently is going to do a live stream where he breaks this down in even greater fidelity. You can't miss it. Culture Casino is also putting out excellent content regularly. And if you're not over there, well, you should be. Culture, what do you have coming up? I know you, uh, I don't even know how you're going to manage to cover the amount of news that is breaking this week. What do you got? Oh, we've, uh, well, this morning we've already released a video about Civil War, a review, because uh, I do, I watch movies, so you don't have to, so you can check that out. And we've you really another... mean it in this case, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do mean that. You don't have to. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's boring. Uh, that's actually the thumbnail title. It's boring. You didn't like Miss <laughs> Dunst? Uh, you didn't like her sour face for two hours? No, actually, uh, they, I have to tell you, it's amazing that her expression <laughs> seems to be uh, uh, fixed. 
He has a fixed yes. expression for this whole film. Uh, but the uh, that there's that. And then, of course, I've got a Fallout review coming out uh, probably tomorrow. But between now and then, uh, we've got a couple, a couple things to cover how they're going to dig out of the hole from Dune 2 to Dune 3. Um, and uh, another uh, business uh, c- conversation around, uh, well... The basically Hollywood imploding because the Writers Guild wants to double down on their efforts that they 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 on the, the on the things that they achieved in their in their last strike. Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> well, Coach, so, I can't I cannot wait yeah. for your uh, review mm-hmm. of Fallout because that has garnered I think some of the most divisive reactions inside our community I've ever seen. Oh wow! People people within our community both love it and despise it and. Uh, that's really interesting to watch. You know, usually that's a narrative that the media puts out. You know, the media will love something and every day folks will dislike it. In this case, I think there's some people who really dislike and really love it. That's interesting to me. So, yeah. culture, I cannot wait to check it out. Thank you. Folks, we'd love to do this forever, but we mustn't. We must continue on because more videos are on the way. So until we see you next time, hopefully at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, keep learning, keep growing, and as always, keep having fun. What are you doing? Well, you see, I wanted to get some inside scoops on Disney and their, uh, different corporations, if you know what I mean. So I figured, by looking to this fistbowl and sucking it randomly with my own energy that I pay for, uh, you pay for, I could do the whole experience where you can be a master and spy on your targets. You're an idiot. If you want to get the inside scoop on Disney or even other media organizations, you should check out ThatParkPlace.com and subscribe to WDW Pro's YouTube channel. That'd be way easier, more accurate, and, uh, less dumb. Are you saying I won't get accurate information this way? No. No, you can't. Yeah. Who'd have thunk? <sighs>